Okay, that's right, yeah. Here's an email message from oh. Okay. Here's an email message from Doug Dyke, changed his name to Clark. And that was sent out in September. That was sent out September 21st, 2006. Are you fucking... There's an email message from Doug Dyke. And uh, it was sent out September 21st, 2006. Kathy, I apologize for the late email. But I was away on a course in Ottawa. I have just read your email and I will follow up. I located both locations that you gave me on Lake Simcoe. The wooded area that you gave us at the regional entranceway to the forest was not as you depicted. There are no hills, embankments, and or gullies that would enable, that would have afforded your description of the area where the body was to have been buried. Possibly a tour of the area would be required to refresh your memory or stimulate your memory. Please keep me posted on your thoughts and we can communicate via email. Thank you, Detective Constable Douglas Dyke. And I ask him at this time. Him. <coughs> There's another email message from Doug Dyke. Changed his name to Doug Clark. This was sent March 29, 2006, just after I met him. I think with an email address like Cop Busters, he would have known it. It would have been taping his conversations. Too bad for him. Anyway. <coughs> this was after I met um, Doug Dyke and his partner uh, on about February 4th, 2006. It was only after that I actually read some of the newspaper clippings um, and articles regarding her, her murder. And I was kind of shocked. It was only... <clears throat> this message is from March 29, 2006. I met him for the first time on uh, February 4th, 2006. It was only after my meeting with him that I actually looked through the newspaper clippings and uh, read what the newspaper and read articles on the web. And I was really shocked to find out that everything that they had written was totally different than what I had said. And I wrote to uh, Doug Dyke about that. Hmm. This whole thing has perplexed me. A few days ago I did check the old Toronto Star archives through their web access and I did find the story of Yvonne Leroux written on December 1st, 1972. I have no problem remembering picking up a girl in Mississauga in 1972 and no problem with the accuracy of my dad getting into a fight with a girl in the car. In the tapes of Detective Shearer, I believe they state that the girl we picked up during the day had on something white. I did read in the article that Yvonne was wearing a white blouse. I also read in the article that her mum met her after school and drove her home. This is not consistent 
with me thinking that we had met her that day. I checked the time of sundown for that day and it was approximately 4.30. Did we meet her and then plan on meeting her again later? I don't know. Did he find out where she would be later? I don't know. I believe it'll be confirmed that earlier that day she was um, out in a park. That's where we first met her that day. There was some kind of music and things happening in the park. I don't know. I wasn't allowed to go in. I was told to wait near the car. And he brought her to the car where I met her. Hmm. What are the chances of me guessing that she was killed there on the spot that she had her clothes on and I'm going to guess that she was not raped. What are the chances of me guessing that she was on the road and the weapon was removed from the scene? It sounds like extremely good guessing. When I do remember it, it sure seems real. I see it, hear it, the voices and feel the horror and confusion. What is inconsistent with the article is that I said it happened when it was dark. In the article it said that she was found at 8.30 a.m. minutes after she was killed. I checked the sun up times for that day and apparently it was at 7.30. So if that article is right then I am wrong or that article is wrong and I may be right. I seriously don't know what to think about this. I also do not remember any snow but then it was not something I would I've been looking at. I'm going to state now though that with any kind of competent autopsy the time of her death would coincide when the snow just before the snow started falling that day. This has perplexed me. I really don't know what to think of this. Do you think we can ever find the truth? At some time I would appreciate your input so I know what to do with it. Kathy Norris and he writes me back saying thank you for your email I have read this over and you are quite right there may be discrepancies in the story from the paper and then again they only report what they have been told and may not have been told everything at the time you not remembering certain things is very normal because if it was of no direct interest to you at the time or anything earth shattering you would not remember it. I know I have your new address and phone number from our last meeting, but could you please resend it? Thanks again for your note, and we will be talking soon. Doug Dyke.